I'm gonna show you the best way to repair your broken power cords. Whether that be for your power tools, your gardening tools, or your extension leads. Today I need to repair this beauty here. That one there was caused by a big fat rat. And this one was caused by a big spinning disc. That isn't what you wanna do. That is the worst job that you could ever do. And then on my cement mixer, look at this beauty. This is definitely something you don't wanna do as well. That's a connector block in there, just wrapped in tape. Now this is what you actually want to be using. This is an inline cable connector, sometimes called an inline junction box. There's one on my planer. But my disc cutter and my cement mixer, they were both second hand. I didn't do them dodgy repairs. So you might be wondering what makes these so special? Well they're IP68 rated and that means that they're fully dust proof and you can submerge them in water up to one and a half meters for half an hour before you've got any issues. I'll quickly show you the exploded view. That's the nut at the end. That is where the cable goes through and that's what keeps that waterproof. And then on this side, you've got the rubber gasket. That will screw into the end of this. So that is fully waterproof. That is like a traditional connector block almost. Now this one's from Screwfix. I got it from there because I needed it right this second today. I'm trying to avoid causing a fire. I'll leave a few links to some Amazon ones. They're a little bit easier to interpret in terms of cable sizing. But if you're not familiar with that kind of thing, I'm gonna have a go at explaining it to you even though I'm not an expert. Just to be clear, it's not designed for flat cable. It's only for the round flexi style wire. Just to explain for anyone that's new here, I'm currently building my new home, which means I'm running quite a few things off extension leads. Now wiring is sized in millimeter squared and the ones we're typically gonna be dealing with is one and a half millimeter squared, two and a half millimeter squared, and four millimeter squared and that's for gardening tools power tools and extension leads so this two pen and earth socket here with this extension lead that's going to be four millimeter and this one here this is a standard socket that extension lead is going to be two and a half so that's basically the size of the copper inside the size of the conductor and on my cement mixer this is only going to be one and a half mil so you have to be careful because some of them will only cover up to two and a half mil. Uh, this one that I've got, it covers up to four mil. If you're going above that for any reason, you probably need a, a different type of one altogether with resin in. Just to give you a little bit of a, an indication, a general idea, this tool here is 2000 watts, but on startup, it normally draws three times that. So it needs 6,000 watts potentially. That tells me, it is likely that this is four millimeters squared because that can take up to 8,000 watts. Whereas on the cement mixer, it turns slowly. That motor is not gonna have a high wattage. That's the reason why they've got away with a one and a half mil. You can use a micrometer gauge to check the diameter of your actual wire. I'll give you a rough idea. One and a half mil is gonna be uh, eight millimeter in diameter. Two and a half millimeter squared wire is gonna be nine and a half millimeter in diameter. Four millimeter is gonna be 11 millimeter diameter. The wire that I'm repairing there is gonna be a four millimeter squared wire. That's the maximum rating on this. That is one of these, it's an extension lead. It's 11 millimeters in diameter. It's got two pin and earth plug, 16 amp. The power is disconnected. Don't do this if you're not confident. Get an electrician and pay a load of money for something that's really easy. Uh, take the gland nut off. You got this neoprene gasket. Uh, for mine, because it's the big one, I need to take the inner gasket out. It's like a ceiling ring. So I'm only gonna be using that one. So I do that for both sides. For this particular one, there's a little arrow on this and the connector block only goes in one way. All of the live, neutral, and then the earth on there. Totally get rid of that shit bit. Okay, that's what we're left with. All the colors match. They're in the right place. They're all secure. It's not going anywhere. You're not showing any copper wire anywhere. You just need to screw this all together. Okay, so that's gonna go in there. That's gonna go on there. That'll go on that one. 
do the grounds up until it's proper tight. No one probably see, but they see you see the ring there. I'll just fuck that up. Make sure it's gone inside these teeth here before you actually do it up. There you go, sorted. And that is how you do it properly. I suppose we better fix them other bodge jobs.